Imagine this, you're a young, prosperous 20-year-old getting the opportunity of a lifetime, a full-time NASCAR ride at Henrik Motorsports. Yet, it's not just any ride at HMS, it's the legendary Neon 24 with flames. Despite these high hopes and aspirations, you go through complete hell in your rookie season. Tons of inexperience and faulty equipment fully hinders excelling at that dream. Then a veteran crew chief takes over the headset and that potential is enlightened. That's exactly what took place for William Byron. On this new series, we're going to take a look at the 180 in performance for the highly talented Charlotte resident. Beginning on the screens of iRacing, Byron was a breakout star on the NASCAR circuit, winning seven races as a rookie in the NASCAR Truck Series, shattering the record set by Cub veteran Kurt Busch. While his title hopes blew up, he earned redemption with Junior Motorsports. He schooled veteran teammates Elliott Sadler and Justin Allgaier, winning four races en route to hoisting the Xfinity Championship. Rick Hendrick saw Byron's quick mastery behind the wheel and opened up a seat for the 20-year-old on his NASCAR Cup team. Willie B would drive the renumbered 24 Exalta Chevrolet Camaro beginning with the 2018 Daytona 500. It was a childhood dream for many, including myself, but for William Byron, that dream became reality. The hype was up to oblivion, I mean, just look at that paint job. The brilliant flames that graced NASCAR Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon's ride for 15 years would make a vengeant return. He would without a doubt return the iconic 24 to victory Lane, something his predecessor failed in 72 cup races. From an internal standpoint, the paint scheme was a glittering generality. Byron wouldn't inherit that same 24 team Elliott had during his rookie season. Pretty much, he took over the appalling 5 team, typically the experimental car at Hendrick Motorsports. Things were so tedious with that car that Rick Hendrick made a change during the playoffs. While Casey Kane was still competing in the round of 16, Keith Rodden was removed as crew chief. Darian Grubb took over beginning at New Hampshire, earning only two top 10 finishes to end the campaign. Realistically, he wasn't contending for victories, nor would he come close to making the playoffs. For next season, it was simply gain experience and move in the right direction long term. During the spring, William Byron and the 24 crew were roughly mid-packed to the surprise of many. No top 10 finishes, but he only placed worse than 20th twice and at zero DNFs. Following a 10th place finish at Texas, Byron was ahead of both Chase Elliott and Jimmy Johnson in points. A 12th place at the Richmond Raceway, meanwhile, vaulted the 24 into a playoff position. While Hendrick Motorsports was struggling, one positive was the rookie driver wasn't tearing up equipment. That would change during the wonderful month of May. An average finish of 28th and 3 DNFs dropped them down to 21st. The flames of despair only spread from that point. Byron wouldn't earn his second top 10 of the year until Pocono in July. Five DNFs in the final 12 races continued to school the Liberty U student on the racetrack. The driver made mistakes, the team had some mechanical issues at Darlington and Kansas, and as a result, they were hellfully inconsistent. This looked more like an average Richard Petty Motorsports ride than a car for HMS. To end his first 36 race grind, his stats mirrored the rookie season of Brian Vickers. He never finished inside the top five. It was a first for Henrik Motorsports since Vickers and Terry Labonte were shut out in 2004. His four top tens also matched his rookie counterpart. Now, the scariest aspect for this whole deal relied with 9 DNFs, meaning that 25% of his rookie season was spent behind the wall. Subtract the two mechanical issues, he'd still have more DNFs and a lower lap completion percentage than Danica Patrick in 2013. I'll go even farther and say she had a more memorable rookie year as well. At the very least, Danica led laps and finished 8th in the Daytona 500. The only thing William Byron accomplished was winning the weakest rookie of the year class since 2015. He likely would have been crushed if Eric Jones or Daniel Suarez would have been promoted a year later. Compared to Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Chase Elliott, William Byron's ROTY campaign was a completely forgettable failure for a debut campaign. Without a doubt, change needed to be made. On October 10, 2018, it was announced that Darian Grubb would not return as crew chief. He would move to a more technical role at HMS. Taking his place in 2019 would be none other than seven-time cup champion Chad Knauss. Cracks were evident with Jimmy Johnson and the 48 team, and rather than retiring, Jeff Gordon convinced him to work with William Byron. As a young driver like William Byron, it was a huge confidence booster to have a decorated crew chief help work on developing your talents. For drivers like Kurt Busch and Joey Logano, crew chiefs helped them elevate their competitiveness in NASCAR and ultimately become champions. The goal for hiring Chad Knauss was to make strides on the 24 speed and performance and mature their young driver. So as time trials for the 61st Daytona 500 began, the duo made a first impression. Fast in practice transitioned to qualifying, claiming the pole position for Sunday's big race. Byron led an HMS 1-2-3-4 charge and showed signs of a thriving sophomore season. To keep things concise, William Byron disappointed from that point forward. 
12 races into 2019, he was seeded 19th in points, 15 markers behind Jimmy Johnson for the last playoff position. Speed wasn't an issue as they qualified in the top three during five of those races. What purged their success was the fact that they just weren't executing during the race. The 24 had an immense amount of finishes 20th or worse and would fade during the second half of the race. The moment of truth for William Byron came during his 49th NASCAR Cup Series start. For NASCAR's most grueling race of the year, the 24 qualified on the pole position. With Memorial Day marking as a quarter century anniversary since Jeff Gordon's first victory, things were looking promising. As the 600 mile race went green, he led 31 laps in race alongside champions Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. He finished 400 laps scored in the ninth position, and while it wasn't a win, it was a major confidence booster that turned around his season. Pocono would be a cardboard copy as he won the pole position, led laps, and finished ninth once again. More more strong outings at Sonoma, Chicago, and Daytona placed him 12th in points. The Firecracker 400 marked as his first career top 5 finish, placing second to eventual winner Justin Haley. Where the teams of Jimmy Johnson and Daniel Suarez faltered, Byron continued to thrive during the summer heat. He had an exalted Camaro capable of winning Kentucky until he was screwed over by the restart zone. Yet they continued to rattle off position points and solid finishes, earning his second career top five at Pocono. Concluding the Southern 500, Willie B clinched a spot in the NASCAR postseason. Considering the cataclysmic state one calendar year ago, it was already an A-grade season. Even with the massive progression, the 24 team wasn't done yet. Race number one would be in the Sin City. Statistically a pitiful track for William Byron with no finishes inside the top 15 in three career starts. Despite a flat tire mid-race, Chad can now use excellent strategy to end the night in seventh. Exiting the fairgrounds of Richmond, Byron and crew found themselves barely inside the round of 12 two single position points ahead of teammate Alex Bowman. With his skill level on road courses, however, the Charlotte Roval was a perfect venue for Byron. He excelled, scoring 10 stage points and scoring 6th on the pylon. It was a moderate race, which advanced him to the second round. In that three-race swing, William Byron mustered a 13th place at Dover and finished 5th at Kansas. At a track where his best finish was 20th, William Byron had race contending speed and had a better long-run car than teammate Chase Elliott. The middle race at Talladega was what did him in. Despite winning stage one, a wreck mid-race hurt their Cinderella run at the round of eight. Ultimately, the pack had spoken and Willie B's playoffs were extinguished. It hurts, but they for sure exceeded expectations. Not very many young drivers make the playoffs, let alone advance to the round of 12. The highlight of the entire season, however, came a week after his elimination in the round of 12. William Byron, prior to his fourth visit to the paperclip, had an average finish of 25th with a best finish of 20th. Martinsville is a way of intimidating young drivers, and this track was his kryptonite more so than Vegas, Kansas, and Richmond. Yet, on that Sunday afternoon, you would have figured Jeff Gordon came out of retirement for this race. Byron was a top 10 caliber car all race long, mixing it up with playoff guys such as Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano. Closing out the race, he could taste his first victory in the NASCAR Cup Series. If you could actually pass with this aero package at Martinsville, he could have caught MTJ. Despite coming up short in second, it was an impressive run for the kid who began on a computer. The legend represented on a side door praised Byron concluding the race and things were looking upward for the 24 fandom. In the end, William Byron's stats are as follows. 5 top 5s and 13 top 10 finishes, which was a 225% increase from 2018, adding in a 99% lap completion percentage and only 3 DNFs. He went from leading all active drivers in DNFs to about the league average from 2018 to 2019. Add in 5 pole awards, 233 laps out front, and a final points finish of 11th, there was no sophomore slump in sight. In fact, you could call it a sophomore surge. Not to mention, had his engine not expired in Miami, he would have placed as the highest HMS driver in points. One year ago, there were leagues behind Chase Elliott and the top tier number 9 team. Ending 2019, he was just one point lower than the considered best team at Hendrick Motorsports. I'd say that's pretty damn impressive. With the rapid progression of this team, there's a lot to be optimistic about for 2020. William Byron will for certain win a race or two next season. My guesstimate would be at a road course such as Sonoma or even Spring Martinsville if things come to fruition. Chad Knauss, meanwhile, should keep his position for at least three to four more seasons. I'm sure he'd like to see what Byron can do in the early 2020s and possibly win championship number eight. Before we can look too much in the future, we just have to appreciate the turnaround here in 2019. 
As a Jeff Gordon fan, it was depressing to see the car run 17th to 20th on a weekly basis. Luckily, Rick Hendrick's long-term envision and loyalty to prospects has crafted William Byron. In just one calendar year, William Byron went from the lowest of lows to a prospect on the rise. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach and then you drive. <laughs>